What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Blueprint. Tonight, we got some more NFL breaking news. Um, quick hitters. Quick hitters for you. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. You know, obviously, like I said, quick hitters. I'm not going to be too too deep on anything, but I guess my first thing That's, is. How about we do this? We go back and forth. You want to do that? You first, then yeah. me. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. I, got, I got a few. Um, I got to start off with my. With my guy, Kayla, baby. As let's, you should. Let's go. Kayla Williams, uh, <laughs> four for seven, I think 95 yards, then 13 rushing. Looked looked really good. You know, looked poised. Um, moved in the pocket really well. Obviously, everyone's talking about, you know, that little – I don't even know if it was a no look, but that just that flip to DeAndre Swift um, and then the Colt Komet throw. But I think one of the most impressive throws was – the one I think it was on third down and long to DJ Moore. Yes. He went, he went through one or two reads. Um, guys weren't open and slung it to DJ Moore in a perfect spot. So that's the kind of the thing that I, I like to see um, because the wild moments are going to be there. But it's just the uh, before the play starts, you know, going, reading the defense, seeing what they're about to do, uh, making sure you got the right play on. And then, yep. and then after the snap, going through those reads um, quickly, you know, the pocket presence and everything like that. So I like what I saw, and it's only the beginning, I hope. So, uh, you know, I think he's going to have a great, great career here, and I'm I'm super excited, man. I think we finally have our quarterback. So I don't want to overreact to After one. After years. After years and wanna, years yeah, and years. years. Yeah, um, after a lot of misery at the offensive quarterback spot. Um I don't overreact to one preseason game, but he looks like the guy. So, yeah, know. Caleb looked good, man. Um, you talked about that throw. Another thing about that throw on third and like twelve, I think it was, is he stepped in the pocket, and I think that was the improvement that he had from college. You know, he liked to, you know, scramble around a lot. You know, to the size, but he stepped in the pocket, and it's crazy because the recording on the game or the broadcast, they couldn't even like react to his throw. Like it was, it had so much like zip on it and snap on it that it was like you and like they couldn't even like pick up on it so you know he's just a talented quarterback man and the throw to Cole Komet um rolling out to his right punk fake got the defensive line hands in the air so give him extra time then he like threw a little hip swivel which is so much velocity on that throw I mean when you can do stuff like that on the screen like it doesn't look extremely crazy but throws like that a lot of quarterbacks in this league can't make so he's just a special talented player and I'm pretty sure that boy is going to eat in that offense. Like, there's no question about it. With DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunsey, um, I, th- I think he should be should be balling for sure. Yeah. The O-line looks solid. Um, you know, and what I like to see is the DJ Moore and uh, Cole Komet, uh, what they said after the game, just how he looks outstanding, poised, ready to play, uh, and just one-of-a-kind type of performance for his ro- first ever live NFL action. Um, you know, he's confident and got that, you know, swagger and stuff about him that he just, he just knows he's going to do good things. So, you know, that's, that's he something knows I, he's just going to tear up your defense. Yeah. That's what he knows. <laughs> yeah, man. Like he's just very confident. Some people think it's cocky, but you know, the haters can hate, you know, I just know I got my franchise quarterback now. So, Talk. Uh, so yeah, you know, Great, great first performance. God, just got to keep it going. Yeah. I mean, as a quarterback, I would probably rather have my quarterback be cocky and confident. I don't want someone who's, you know, to to, a, to some degree, right? I don't want him to be, you know, terrible, you know, person to his teammates in, in, in the locker room. But, like, to some degree, yeah, I think all the best quarterbacks, you know, are a little cocky and confident and have high emotion and stuff like that. You know, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, you know, Lamar Jackson, I think they all – play with a lot of swagger, and I think you need that as a quarterback. But moving on, man, Hassan Reddick requests trade from the Jets. Um, New York says it won't deal, but, I mean, that's that that's crazy. Um, he just got there, right? And, you know, now that he's not getting paid, and, and I think the Jets are in it right here. I think they need to see a season of Hassan Reddick play. How old is he, like 33 or something like that? He's, he's definitely in his 30s. Um, yeah. For um, sure. I don't. I don't blame the Jets. I think they need to see at least a year of you playing some high level football again before you get paid. And you just got there as well. You know, I think that when you go to a new situation, you know, things have to be earned. 
You know what I'm saying? It's simple as that. Um, so I, I kind of side with the Jets here. He's not going to get traded. I, I genuinely don't think that. But I think Hassan Reddick kind of needs to play this year out and see and weigh out his options after that. If you go kill it this year and you do your thing, which I think he will. I think he's a high-level player. I think he'll get your money, just like Chris Jones did. Um, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, bizarre news. from When I saw that, I was like, <laughs> what is going on? Like, you just got there. You haven't even played a game yet. Like, um, yeah, I, it's a weird situation for sure. I mean, do the Jets even want him there now after all this? Like, it's just going to cause some drama and some friction. Like, you know, that's going to be interesting. But he obviously is a good pass rusher. Um, and and so I think the Jets are a better team with him if he's locked in and everything. But you also don't want to have that locker room, you know, drama that's unnecessary too at the same time. But yeah, it's just a bizarre situation for real. So, and it's uh, like, um, and it's like the Jets already have you know a top five defense, um, in this league. I think they'll have a top five defense this year too. But based on a talent standpoint, it's top five for sure. And I feel like, you know, you can never not get enough pass rushers in this league. You know, you can always use them. But like, I think they'll still be like a really good defense, man. Like, but that's just me though. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, Sauce. Quinn Williams, they got good linebackers. So on paper, they should be really good, even with or without um, Hassan Reddick. So it's going to be very interesting to follow that story and see what happens with that. Um, but, yeah, my next thing, Hollywood Brown from the Chiefs, injured, um, little shoulder issue. I can't remember what it's called, but I know Tyreek Hill had a similar situation, I guess, a few years ago. Kept him out like a month or so. Um yeah, you think it's going to be a, a, a huge loss or, you know, what what do you think about that uh, for the Chiefs losing him already? Um, I also heard that Andy Reid said it won't be uh, – he won't need surgery. So, I yeah, think that is a good part on top of it yeah. as well. Um, but I think that, you know, it's not ideal if you're a Chiefs fan, right? You came off a year where, you know, your offense was pretty stagnant, a lot of drop passes, you know, turnovers and things like – and fumbles and stuff like that. And you're set to have, you know, a great passing offense this year. You cried Xavier Worthy, fastest 40 time Marquise Brown. He can stretch the field vertically as a deep threat. And, you know, you get year two Rasheed Rice as well. You get your run game back with Pacheco. So it's not something you want as a Chiefs fan, but I don't think it necessarily hurts them because we saw them win a Super Bowl with not very much at the same time. So we know that Mahomes can do it. He can break down their defense, uh, break down defenses, excuse me and, you know, play at a high level. But I think it is something that kind of if you're a Chiefs fan, it's just kind of like before even going to the season, it's like, dang, because Hollywood is a little guy. He's little. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's not a big guy. So, like, it is something that you don't want to see. Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't think it's going to be a huge loss. I, you know, he might not open the year with them. So, you know, they have a tough first two weeks with the Ravens in Cincinnati. So, obviously, you want to be fully healthy. but. You know, obviously, it is better that it's like a shoulder than, you know, something like a knee or hamstring, something like that. You know, I think that's a good sign, and he should be back relatively soon. So, but, yeah, it sucks. You know, obviously, injuries happen, but when they happen in preseason, it just hurts even more. So, um, but, yeah, you want to see that explosive offense again. He's going to be a big part of it. So, yeah. getting him back is going to be huge for this team, for sure. Yeah, he literally has the potential to be, like, the most important weapon in this offense this year. I understand with Travis Kelsey, obviously, he's always going to be regarded as that, too. But Travis is just getting older. You know what I'm saying? That's just the complete fact of it and everything like that. Last year, first season, not getting 1,000 yards as well. Um, I think Travis will still play at a high level when he needs to. Like, in the playoffs, like he did this year, he was amazing in his playoffs. You know what I'm saying? I think he'll be the same way. But I think the, the things Hollywood Brown can do – you give a guy like Mahomes, you know, a you know, a low end wide receiver one or high end wide receiver two like that, who who can stretch the field vertically and give this offense something that they didn't have from years prior. And Xavier Worthy, you know, you can you can kind of believe in it, but we still have to see it. He's a rookie and I know he had the fastest time, but we just still have to see it, right? So I think that's something that to pay attention to. But if he's not if it's not a nagging injury, I think he'll be fine in that offense. Uh moving on. Dolphins removed uh, outside linebacker Jalen Phillips from physical uh, unable to perform list. Um, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, that's that's a big loss. Their defense honestly is struggled with injuries mightily last year. Yeah. Um and also just they're all kind of just a mediocre type of defense. I know they got the names, but um uh, like I said, injuries and just those type of things last year cost them big time, especially late in the year. Um and I think they're just mediocre as it is, so they, they need to get him back for real. Um as soon as possible. Yeah, I agree. I think Jalen Phillips showed some very good strides. Although he's been injured, he's had some very good flashes. And to not have him out there, going to put a lot of pressure on Chop Robinson um, to come out um, and have a huge impact right away as a rookie. But nonetheless, though, you need pass rushers in this league, especially in the AFC. So many great quarterbacks. And if you can't get pressure on, on the quarterback, I think you're going to struggle. If you if you can't, if you don't have a, a DC like Spags, who can, you know, you know, put together blitzes that work at a high level, or you need two great pass rushers, I feel like, to win this league. Um, like two, like a really good one or a good one, you know what I'm saying? Or like two good ones um, to win in this league. And I don't know if they have that right now. Um, obviously, I think adding Jordan Poyer to that offense helps, uh, or to that defense, excuse me. But uh, we just have to see, man. Um, who would they also get? Uh I forgot his name. I think he's a corner. Might have been Holland. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't. I think they re-signed him or picked him up. I, they lost um, who they they lost Howard. They cut him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, they picked up Jordan Poyer too. Hmm. Yeah. From the Bills. So. Yeah. Um, lost Christian Wilkins. I think it's huge. To be honest. Yeah. Tough situation for the Dolphins. Um. Got to count on that uh, offense to be, you know, electric again, because what used to happen was, um, yeah, they're lighting up the Broncos 70 to 20 and the teams who we really don't care about that they beat. But when they play these high level teams, you know, like the Chiefs, like the Ravens, like the Bills, you know, what I'm saying when the offense and Tua wasn't able to get it together, the defense wasn't able to get stops either. And that was their main problem as well. You know, it's not like it is a Tua thing for sure, but I also think it is a, a defensive thing as well. Um, so if we, I think they need, they need Chop Robinson to be that boy, uh, coming into the year. Definitely. Um, and then my last thing is I saw Noah Lyles or Tyreek say he can beat Noah Lyles in a race. Um, just what are your quick thoughts on that? Um, I'm not going to doubt Tyreek. Um, Tyreek is fast, man. Um, I know Noah Lyles is a track star, but I mean, until we see it, I guess we won't know, but you know. From what I've seen from Tyree Kill, he's very the cheetah. He's the, <laughs> the cheetah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Any dude who is comfortable enough in an NFL game to put deuces up you while he's behind you and run past you, you know, unbelievable. I can't count him out. <laughs> yeah, he's got that you know? track speed. Um, I would love to see him go up against like an Olympian that's yeah. like a gold medalist and see how you can do it. Because he was supposed to race speed, but he yeah. ducked. Come on, he ducked yeah. my boy Speed. What's up with that, Tyree? Uh, <laughs> come on, man. They should have raised. Yeah, that would have been that would have been phenomenal. Speed um, jumping over cars, bro. That's, bro, that's like wow. You can literally see his like reflection on the windshield as well. They got it from multiple angles. I mean, that kid is is a different type of kid, and that's the only way I can think about it. Yeah, it's like the barking, the jumping, the, the <laughs> yelling. You know. He's, <laughs> Yeah, jumping over a car, like going 20, 30 miles per hour is probably one of the dumbest things you can do, but he could still do it with ease. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think Tyreek, I would love to see him just try and race in the Olympics. Like, even if he lost, I don't, I just want to see what he would do because he is so fast. Like you said, just throwing up the deuces with guys five yards in front of him um, and still getting past him is just what he does so I, I would love to see that happen the nfl so soft for banning that bro yeah. and and i think it was his videographer um for uh for multiple years too like i guess they planned something where he took the phone he took he took his like camera or phone and he did a backflip like i feel like that was crazy but they banned that kid like that's cr- from the from the league that's crazy the league is so soft for that um yeah. Moving on, though, Broncos Broncos wide receiver Tim Patrick 
um, felt good after getting his first catch after two years. Any thoughts on that and what he could bring to that Broncos offense? We've seen him be very great in the past. He's actually on my fantasy team. Woo, he was putting up numbers for me, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what are, what are your I, thoughts on that? I actually think I picked him up one year, um, and he did some good things. So, yeah. obviously, the, I think he tore his ACL either once or at least maybe twice. Um, so, yeah, just want to see him healthy. The loss of Jerry Judy is – you know, they got to fill up that wide receiver two spot behind Sutton. Um, and so I think Tim Patrick is definitely a viable option for that. And like you said, he has had good years in the past. Um, and, you know, Bo Nix did look pretty good from what I've heard. So wasn't able to watch that action um, with the Broncos preseason game. But it sounds like Bo Nix was pretty good. Um, all these rookies, really, outside, you know, Caleb, uh, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, and McCarthy all look good, apparently, um, from what I'm hearing so, and seeing um, on Twitter and stuff like that. But, yeah, Tim Patrick, um, just stay healthy, please, because, you know, I think the, the Broncos definitely need you um, to produce. Yeah, um, very important for that offense. Uh, they're trying to find their way. It's going to be a re- rebuild year for them as well. Um, some quarterbacks. I didn't get to watch JJ McCarthy, but I heard he looked well too. But I, I watched the Bo Nix highlights. He looked good, man. He's obviously he was the most uh, accurate quarterback in college football last year as well. He wins in the pocket as well, and he's a good decision maker. And I think those are good things for a rookie quarterback to have. He doesn't have that, you know, freakish talent like a guy like Kayla Williams or you know CJ Stroud or someone like that has. But I think. For him not to be able to take sacks is going to be a huge thing as well. And I, he did that in that game, but that's a huge thing as well. If you're not a very talented guy who can make all platform throws, um, you got to be able to win in the pocket. You got to be able to not take sacks for losses, especially on third down. And you got to be a good decision maker. And I think he can do all those things. And obviously, he's very accurate. So uh, I think there's good things to come with him. And that was that was Sean Payton's guy. Like he, I'm pretty sure he vividly. You know, him uh, straightforward said, I want Bo Nix. So, you know, good for him. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the thing I, I am looking forward to is seeing all these rookies. Um, but also, I think a guy like Drake May, um, it's going to take some time with him. I think the other guys might look – I know it's just preseason, but I think the other guys all might look better than Drake May potentially. Um, but I just feel like we got to be patient with Drake May the most out of all these guys because, A, the situation, not very oh, good. It's horrible, bro. Very, very not good. Um, and just, you know, that's just what people were saying before he even got drafted. It's just like might take a year or two before you can really unlock his potential. So, um, you know, with guys like Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, obviously we just talked about Bo Nix, um, and then McCarthy, I think all have significantly better – um, situations and also most of those guys are, um, are going to be very, very talented right away and look good right away just based off their talent. So, you know, that's just all I got to say about the Drake May situation. I think he only threw, played one series or something like that, but I just want to be patient with him because, um, yeah, the situation's horrible and with him, it's, it's going to take some time um, just with his, his skill set too, so. Yeah, no, I agree. And the only quarterback um, drafted situation is like close to that is Bo Nix. But I don't think it's as bad considering he has Sean Payton there, a Hall of Fame coach who is known to get the most out of his quarterbacks as well. Um, So I think that is a plus for him. Whereas Drake May, you know, you have a lot of young receivers out there. You have a new head coach. They're coming off the team who is not that talented. You don't have the best weapons. Like, um, so it's going to be tough for sure. But, um, you know, he's got to hang in there. No. Definitely. Um, yeah, Bo Nix, Sean Payton, having his full confidence in him is going to be huge. I know the, 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 the weapons aren't great, but um, that's one thing that Bo Nix can definitely um, succeed for or succeed from is the coaching and just, you know, the offensive play caller. Because um, I think the only other one is J.J. McCarthy with an offensive head coach of all these rookies. I could be wrong on that, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's so. I think that's a huge benefit too. But yeah, anything else you uh, got before we wrap? Uh, I don't. Um, super high, super high for the NFL season, man. The more we talk about it, we do these weekly stuff, and we've been doing these division breakdowns. You know, 
it's been exciting getting back into it, man. Um, NFL Red Zone, one of the best creations ever made, up there with water, food, shelter. Um, so I'm definitely excited for this NFL season. Yeah. Yeah, I think at some point we got to do a, 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 a list um, of best creations ever. And uh, we'll have to let you all know where uh, NFL Red Zone comes in. It's got to be in the top ten for sure. It might not, it might be number one. It might be number seven. We don't know. You know yeah, we have to make but yeah, we're gonna have to make a list. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, preseason a uh, couple more weeks until it really gets started. So it's gonna be here before you know it. And yeah, like you said, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Keep uh keep following us. And Thursday we'll have our AFC North breakdown preview. So we appreciate y'all. See y'all next time.